Dornbecker 5. Look at that. Dornbecker 5. Oh, my goodness. Lovely shoe. And I wear all my shoes. That's how I kill these fools. I wear all my shoes. Dornbecker 5. Look at the shoe screen. Dornbecker 6s. Gold tip. Jump man in the shoe. New book. High quality new book. And the Bugs Bunny Dornbecker 8. Look at the bottom. Look at that fire. Look at that fire. I wear all my sneakers as you can see. Wear your sneakers. Did y'all compliment another sneakerhead this week? I've been telling y'all to learn how to compliment one another. Quit hating. Look at that. Dorm back at eight. Get a pair. Spin a band and get a pair. Look at the inside of this shoe. Look at the inside. Shalom. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rakhakodash. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, whom the world ignorantly calls God, and Yahweh Shai being the only begotten Son, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and peace and mercy to the house of David, the elect, the 144,000 men that are doing this work in sincerity and truth, and the one third of the men, women, and children that are listening learning and believing who are uh, going to be saved in these latter days through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem. Y'all shout out to you all. I say Shalom. As you can see, I have a video sent to me, sent by Gabar Yahawada from Hawaii about this individual known as the sneaker preacher. And honestly, man, I guess it's just your day because I wasn't even supposed to go off into, uh, you know, more detail about this guy. But it's like, as I was just trying, I was just trying to find the guy's name. And after finding, trying to look for his name, so much stuff was revealed about this guy, his congregation, you know, all of this kind of stuff. Because I have a few pictures and other videos um, that I'm going to snippets that I'm going to play uh, later, later down the line uh, in this lesson. But uh, this guy's name is doctor is not doctor is that guy's name is Pastor Claude L. Williams. OK, Claude L. Williams. And so uh, that's why I got this wolf and sheep clothing, man. Yeah, these these guys are getting to the point where they're literally showing you that they are demons, man. Okay? And that they only want your money. They're literally showing it to you. And they don't care. They have no remorse. And you people, like the fools that you are, all right? I'm talking to the Christians, uh, you know, because... The real Christians are the Israelites, but uh, the the modern day Christian are you fools who just believe anything without confirmation from the Bible, who don't follow the law, statutes, commandments of the Bible. So I guess it's just your day to not only expose false teachers in general, but specifically this man. But these are all this is the same mindset of all of these false pastors and false preachers out here. So let me get this. This is Micah three and nine. It says, hear this, I pray you, ye heads of the house of Jacob and princes of the house of Israel that abhor judgment and pervert all equity. So that's what uh, they pretend to be like this picture here. These false teachers, you know, mainly because, first of all, you got to be an Israelite in order to be a prophet. First and foremost, you got to be of the lineage of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, so-called blacks, Native Americans and Hispanics. All right. Uh, according to the seat of your father, but not based on your skin color. OK, but it says uh, they abhor judgment and they pervert all equity. So they don't they don't they, they despise judgment. They don't listen to judgment. They don't think of the judgment of the Heavenly Father. They only think of the the things that he's going to bless you with wealth and health and prosperity. It says pervert all equity. It says they build up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. These are our, our people that are leading uh, Israelites astray. It says the heads thereof judge for reward. And the priests thereof teach for hire, and the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, Is not the Lord among us? None evil can come upon us. So that's what they say. They say, Hey, God is dealing with us, obviously, you know. All of this money that we getting, God gotta be dealing with us. All right, but the the scriptures say uh in Proverbs twenty three and twenty three, you're supposed to buy the truth and sell it not, man. Okay, you're not supposed to be doing this for filthy lucre's sake. You're not supposed to be doing this for money. You're not supposed to be doing this for hire. Okay. You're supposed to uh, do the work and the will of the Lord 
without money. As a matter of fact, let me get that in Isaiah uh, 55th chapter real quick um, before my other videos pop up. This is Isaiah 55 and 1. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, and come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without price. All right, so you're supposed to, this, that's this word. The, the, the waters and the drink and the bread, that's this word, man. You're supposed to give it without, without price. All right, it says, Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight in itself. So the thing is, the Lord said he's going to give us, uh, our souls are going to delight in the word without uh, these false pastors and false preachers. All right, because if you're going to follow the Bible, you got to follow the way of righteousness. You got to follow the men, all right, that are telling you uh, to uh, listen to the words of the Heavenly Father. All right, and so like this right here, this is God's Instagram page. You know, I mean, his uh, TikTok page, the Instagram, he called himself the sneaker preacher. And this dude is pretty low level. Like, honestly, compared to like TD Snakes and uh, Joel Osteen, he's pretty low level. You know what I'm saying? But he on here, he got, what, 20,000 followers. But you're going to see towards the bottom, his slogan is, I'm killing these fools. And you're going to hear him say it a couple times throughout the videos that I got, you know. But that that's what he says, man. I'm killing these fools. So he's literally saying... He's calling you a fool, and he's telling you that he's killing you, and he's doing it with your money. Even though he may, you know, I read something that he got a job somewhere else, you know, and stuff like that. Like, look, this is their page account. You're not at House of Prayer. The, it's a bag of money on there, man. A case of money on their uh, Facebook, and there it's it's on multiple places. Like, I looked somewhere else. It was uh, on there. I, don't, I couldn't find their actual page, but it was like a Wix page or something like that. You know, they got a box of money on there, man. <laughs> this is crazy. This is uh, Jeremiah 5 and 31. He says, uh, 30, a wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it. So what will you do in the end thereof? You see, so that that's what uh, these people are. Look, we were at, we are a church that will keep its focus on the people to touch the save and reach the lost at all cost. See that? So they all about money, man. That's all that. This is a, we gonna get that money by by any means necessary. That's what that statement is really saying. Okay. Get we gonna get to, right. We gonna reach the lost because the lost need to know how to spend their money. Preach on back with a good word. Um, this will be coming from, i start out the foundational verse is coming from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter um, uh, 2 and verse 2. And it reads, the Apostle Paul says, For I am determined not to know anything among you save Christ and him crucified. I want to focus on that word determined. Apostle Paul said, I'm determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Are we determined today, saints? That word determined means, amen, to prefer one thing over another. To decide, to have made a decision. Are you determined in your relationship with Christ? To know that he and his crucifixion is our salvation. Are you determined? We must be determined in our relationship with Christ. In order to be, amen, a powerful man and woman of God, we must be committed, devote, devoted, loyal, hungry, on fire for God. We gotta be determined. Jesus said in John 5 and 30, he said, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. He's determined. I can't of my own self do nothing. Say, we need to come to understand that we can of our own self do nothing for God, for our Lord. As we hear, we need to be determined. He's determined because he said, because I seek not my own will. A lot of times what keeps us from, from being determined, we're seeking our own will, the pleasure. So I can, as you can see, that's this dude's shtick, man. You know, this is he's up here reading scriptures. 
All right. With uh with his sneakers all in front of him. And uh, let me say this as a disclaimer. All right. There's nothing wrong with if you like sneakers, you know, there are brothers who are sneakerheads, you know what I'm saying? It's nothing wrong with liking liking shoes, man. It's nothing wrong with liking what you like. But that's not the problem with this. The problem with this is this is what he's portraying to the people. He's trying you and it's showing you what's coming first. All the sneakers are in the front and the word of, he's in the word of God. He's sitting behind the sneakers. He's preparing. He's portraying to you the idea of the world, man. Let me let me get this in first Corinthians. You know, he's he's showing you that the worldly stuff is what comes first, man. This is uh first Corinthians 10 and 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. So he's showing you that his he's showing you his unrighteousness. He's showing you that uh uh this money and these sneakers are what comes first. Now you saw in that the first video I put, he said, Go ahead and spend you a band on some Jordans, man. That's what he said. Spend a band. So you're telling people to go ahead and spend a thousand dollars on one pair of shoes, right? And you wonder why he wants your money. Like I say, he's low level. It looked like I couldn't his I couldn't really see his uh his uh audience and his congregation and stuff like that. But this dude is pretty low level. But this is what will get him his claim to fame. Okay, this is what will put him up on a level. This is what what people will start knowing him for and how he'll get popular. All right. And there's something else coming up that he that he does uh, that I'm going to show shortly. But this is Matthew six and twenty four. It says no man can serve two masters. See, he got on his table, both his masters, the shoes and what he believes in the Bible. But but he can't have two masters. One is your God and the other is not. And this is how, you know, the Lord isn't his God, man. Yahweh Shai definitely isn't his Lord. At least he thinks doesn't think so on his head because he's um. He's sitting up here with his bald head, which the scriptures uh, explicitly speak against. All right. Shining over there. Uh, the scriptures talk about a man not shaving their beard. All right. He's doing everything against the, the will and the power of the Lord. He's not following the commandments at all. OK. And he's showing people all about his money and his flash. All right. He think this this is what will get me into a mega church. Sean, oh, and you know, he probably had a congregation of people telling him, well, that's a part of your personality. So go ahead and show them. Show them who you are. It's okay, Pastor. It's all right to show that the Lord is blessing you. That's what they that's what the people say, right? You know, but this is wickedness, man. You're not supposed to be showing this to the congregation. You're supposed to be telling them about salvation. All right. You got Martin Luther King in the background, which the scriptures talk about that guy too. I I had the dream, I had the dream, but he spoke not according to the will of the Lord. All right, but let me continue this. Matthew 6 and 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve the Most High and Mammon. Okay? So he's holding fast to the, the sneakers, man. He calls himself the sneaker preacher, which is really the sneaky preacher, man. Because he's, he's showing you people that this is okay to love sneakers and just pay $1,000 for a pair of shoes. All right. And but to still be a devil and to preach the word of God. No, man. All right. You know, he's talking about being determined and preferring something over another. He prefers these sneakers over the word of the most high, man. All right. So, hey, man, like I said, I guess it was just your day to get exposed, man, because the things that you're doing are wicked. And if nobody ain't told you that, hey, if this message gets to you, you're being a demon and you better repent before the Messiah comes back, who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ. All right. This is Jeremiah 14 to 14. Um, you see, they like to read. I mean, three thirteen. They like to read this in the church. Then said, I, our Lord power, behold, the prophets say unto them, ye shall not see the sword. Neither shall ye see famine, but I will give you a sure uh, peace in this place. See, that's what y'all like to say. That the Lord going to give you a sure peace and you're not going to have bad times. You're not going to have famine. You're not going to have the collapse of the dollar. The mark of the beast is not the RFID chip. That's what they say in church. It says, then said, then the Lord said unto me, the prophets prophesied lies in my name. I sent them not. Neither have I commanded them. Neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and the divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of the heart. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, and I sent them not. Yet they say sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. You see that? 
So it says these men are going to be destroyed by sword and famine because he ain't talking about uh, uh, the Messiah coming back. Truly, he ain't talking about repenting. He ain't talking about uh, following the law, statutes and commandments of the Lord. He's not talking about America is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction. He's not saying famine is going to come to the earth. This dude is about prop because the more they talk about prosperity, the more money they can get there in their pockets, the more sneakers he can buy, the more cars he can buy, the more fun he can have. And the more he can give to his wife, man. All right. You know, he had his a picture up there, him and his wife uh, leading the church. And it's uh, like first lady, you know, she probably be preaching in the church. Yeah, the scriptures say a woman not supposed to preach in the church. OK. And this is verse 16, Jeremiah 14 and 16. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem. Uh, because that's amongst Israel because of the famine and the sword. And they shall have none to bury them their wives, nor their sons, nor their daughters, for I will pour their wickedness upon them. So even in that day, your, your wives and your, your people not going to even be able to bury you. They're going to be cast out in the street. They're going to get destroyed, man. Okay. But they don't understand the way of the Lord. They are only, they are living in the Babylonian mindset, thinking that everything is going to happen their way, the way they want to see it, because they don't know the will and the power of the heavenly father and his son, man. Okay. They just say what sounds good. They tell people, but God wants you to live. God wants you to get the American dream and buy your biggest house and get the nicest cars. OK. This is Matthew 7 and 15. But where are false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing? But inwardly they are ravening wolves. That's this guy, man. You know, pull up. He got a oh, look at his sneakers. Look at his car. God blessing him. Well, I'm trying to be in his church. I'm trying to be what he's doing. I'm trying to do what he's doing. Okay? But that's a false prophet. That's why even when they said had John the Baptist, it was said, What what sort you had to came to see? A man in, in soft raiment? All right. So the prophets are gonna be wearing sackcloth in these last days. The prophets are gonna be out on the highways and the byways in these last days. The prophets are gonna be telling you the truth according to the Bible in these last days, man. Okay. Jeremiah 28 and 8 says, um, uh, the prophets that have been before me and the prophets of old prophets out of evil, war and death and destruction, man. OK, but these prophets, they only talk about peace, prosperity and money. OK, you don't see change buckets at Great Millstone uh, 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 camps. OK, you don't see that. It's because people come up and give us donations from time to time. But, hey, that's just the will of the Lord. The Heavenly Father wants that to happen, but we don't ask for it. If you give it to us, that's all a blessing from the Lord. We preach the Lord. We preach salvation. We preach the truth of the Bible. And that's what the thing is. Majority of you Christians, when we pull out a precept, you don't even want to hear what's coming out of the Bible. You don't, the scriptures say you don't even incline your ear. You don't even turn the shoulder. We read it from you from the Old Testament and the New Testament. But you don't want to believe what we're saying. They're all conclusive. They're all inclusive. They're all together. It's one book. OK, and the Messiah is only coming for the Israelites and only for the one third of the Israelites who repent, man. That's what the Bible says. OK, now let me play this next clip of this guy, of his next trinket. <laughs> 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 Corvette, man. Man, they chasing the car. <laughs> I'm in a parade by myself. Try to tell them for me. <laughs> me. You say what? Killing these fools. 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 You see what he said, man? He killing these fools, man. You know, he's talking about you people in your, his congregation. He's talking about you people that are giving money to him. You, you people that are uh, being foolish. The scriptures say, uh, my people are foolish. You Israelites are foolish. But see, this is this car that he's showing off right there, right? A $100,000 car, Chevrolet Corvette, you know, because he, he posted it. And the reason why I know this is because he posted it on his Instagram page, man. All right. He's killing these fools rolling around in this uh, Corvette, man. All right. Got kids running. I'm like, why are these kids chasing him? And it's not because they know who he is. It's because they see this damn car. They're like, that's a nice car. So kids chase after that, man. And so he said he's killing these fools, not knowing that 
He's just being a demon, man. He's just being a demon. And you making the kids, he'll make the people believe that he's blessed by God. But see, that's the thing. The Lord is just blessing you now for uh, giving you false blessings so you can see it for your destruction because he follows after money, which lets you know who his real God is, man. Okay? He want people to speak well of him and stuff, but he's saying he's killing these fools, man. It says, the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into a ditch, man. So all of you people that are following after these people like him, hey, y'all just giving up y'all y'all giving up y'all last dimes and making them rich. You know, some pics are going to come up soon about Creflo Dial and T.D. Jakes and how much their wealth is. This picture here says the grass are, grass is always greener when it's fake. You know, these people are fake. They, they, they're not, you know, they're not. The scripture is talking about the chastening of the Lord, man. When you when you come to serve the Lord, prepare thy heart for temptation. OK, these people are uh, are not uh, trying to show you the way how to find the Lord. This is Luke six and twenty six. Woe unto you when all men shall seek, speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. OK, you see that? So these men, they got people that speak well. And all right, I see you, sneaker preacher. OK, I see those. Those some nice kicks. They speak well on them. But the prophets, the real prophets. All right. Let me get that too. the real prophets are going to be rooting this out because we know y'all not going to speak nice on us. You're going to be like, oh, why are you hating? Y'all some haters. That's what they're going to say about us. But, well, oh, Galatians uh, says, um, am I therefore become your three and 16, I think, or four and 16 says, am I therefore become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth, man. So we know we the bad guys now. Right. But that's OK. We'll be the bad guys. if so to be because the scriptures say have no respect of persons, man. So if you being wicked to the congregation, to the, the children of Israel, hey, we're going to air it out, man. This is first Corinthians 14 and 32. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So the real prophets are going to come back in these latter days, are being risen up to tell the truth of the Bible, the truth of the world, and to expose you false prophets, man. Okay? Yeah, hey, that's that's what uh, the uh, prophets did in the past lives, man. Exposing false prophets. What Elijah do, man? We were just talking about this at Fellowship. The false prophets are all out there trying to, night and day, trying to bring fire from the heavens. Okay? But uh, what did Elijah do? He said, put some more water on it. Put some more water on the log. Put some more water on the log. And then brought the fire through from heaven through the spirit and power of your house by Shema Shah. Exposing all of them. He made it a mockery of them, man. Because they're being wicked. Look at this. Creflo Dollar. It's Creflo Dollar is an American word of faith teacher, pastor, and the founder of the non-denominational World Changers Church. This guy is worth $27 million, man. This is his net worth, okay? And look, like I said, ain't no problem having riches, but it's your means of getting it. We know Israel Israel gets money. You so-called blacks, Native Americans, Hispanics. To really get up on some money, you got to sell your soul. You got to do something wicked because you are under the curses of Deuteronomy 28 and 15 through 68. Okay? Deuteronomy 28 chapter verses 15 through 68, you're up under those curses. So if you're getting like these immaculate amounts of money like this, where your net worth is $27 million, that means you're doing something wicked to obtain it. This guy is a private jet. Okay? So we can, it's an international church. Hey, who are funding this? Your church members that are tithing. All right. You're tithing. Hey, some of y'all even tithe more than the scriptures even require of you, man. You know, and TD Snake's uh, 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 network is about to come up, which is more than this, guys. And, um, you know, there's a little uh, clip that I have coming up of Creflo Dollar as well, where he was arrested about eight years ago. Because he was, uh, and I'm sure brothers brought it out, but he was uh, arrested for uh, apparently beating and choking his daughter, you know? But these are the same men that y'all look up to. And y'all come, he came to church and said, I did not hit her. I did not choke her. She has scratch. She has just scratches on her neck or from her eczema. You know, hey, man, I believe that he choked her ass. I believe that he hit her, man. You know, and we, you know, of course, the scripture talking about withholding the rod, you know, but it's an, it's another level when you punching your kid in the face and and choking him and stuff like that. That's a whole nother level, man. You know, <laughs> but this this is who you people choose to be your your leaders, man. OK. The scriptures say in Jeremiah three and 15, 
He said, how should I learn? I mean, uh, I will give you pastors according to my mind. All right. Not that's will feed you in knowledge and understanding. OK, and that those pastors are here now, starting with the apostles of Great Millstone. Uh, look at this guy, man. He's uh, in 2020. All right. They reported it last year in October. So about a year ago, it says he was worth one hundred and fifty four million dollars, man. That's his net worth. All right. This is crazy. This is first John four and one. But beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of the most high, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So you got to try man's spirit and how you try man's spirit. You got to use the scriptures to discern the the ways of that man. You can even look at a man and tell, you know, if you got a straight up bald head and you don't have a uh, some type of disorder and you have a shaved face and you can see that that man shaves his face. All right. Those are signs. Those are indicators that this man is not serving the Lord. If this man eats pork. This man is flashing his money. You know, the scriptures talk about humility and a man being humble. OK, being humble before the Lord, being humble in his riches, man. But do, do they do? Are they about this? Nah, man, they don't show no level of humility. OK, so the Lord said he's going to destroy these men, man, because they prophesy lies in his name. Let me get this. I'm going to wrap it up on this. Yeah, this is. The, and then it said it's a minute and 44 seconds uh, for Creflo Dollar, which lets you know the spiritual the Lord locked his ass up for being wicked. You know, uh, this is Jeremiah 23 and one. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord, Yahweh. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, power of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit you upon the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. So the Lord said he's going to visit each and every one of you pastors for your wickedness, man. All right. You shall be visited by Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, the heavenly father and his son in these latter days, man. It's going to be a grievous visit. All right. Your visitation from the Lord is going to be grievous and deadly, man. All right. Because you, you, you scatter the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Native Americans and Hispanics. Those are the predominant portion of your uh, congregations. And you're scattering them and showing them that God is his name and Jesus is his name. And it's OK to be wicked and come, come all come as you are. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says you got to repent and change your ways, man. So with that, with that, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and peace and mercy to the house of David the elect. To you all, I say greetings and shalom. Shalom to the elect. You say what? I'm killing these. Killing these.